So today I am celebrating two years of the Body Project podcast. This podcast was started, so it's not quite two years. This podcast was started July the 4th, 2018. And so today I'm making an episode for our second year of this podcast. Uh, It's pretty surreal, right? Two years goes by so quickly. And, you know, even though this podcast is being aired in the midst of a global pandemic and in the midst of so many movements globally, specifically the Black Lives Matter movement, I thought that it was still important to have a conversation to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who have been listening week after week to the podcast, who have been tuning in to every single episode from the beginning, and even those of you who are just discovering the podcast recently, you know, whether it's since COVID or whether it's only been the last year, right? I am so grateful that you've been tuning in week after week. (coughs) Excuse me. You know, the podcast was born out of so much, right? And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Catherine Tanaka. I'm a fitness, nutrition, and accountability coach and the host and producer of this podcast, wherever you're viewing it or listening to it, The Body Project Podcast. And The Body Project Podcast is a podcast where typically I interview the top movement and fitness professionals in the industry. And we've done over 110 episodes now doing exactly that, calling forth some of the best fitness professionals, movement professionals, yogis in the fitness industry to talk about change, making changes in their body, uh, and how they coach their clients to use fitness and movement as as a modality to move from wanting to look better to feeling better, to honoring their body as their temple, to honoring the way that they move and therefore the way that they nourish their bodies and therefore, you know, really fundamentally altering all aspects of their lives. And so if you've tuned into the podcast before, you would have heard many stories of people sharing the powerful conversations around how people have come to them. Clients have come to some of these professionals looking to really just find out about fitness, right? Wanting to lose that 5, 10 pounds for the wedding, 50 pounds for the wedding, look their best. But what transpires is so much more than that. What transpires is, you know, the discipline learned through showing up for yourself every single workout session, right? The focus learned that within that time frame of working with these trainers or these professionals, these coaches, that it is, it is challenging, right? The conversation of Brittany Love that I had way back, I think the first six months of the podcast, where we spoke about what we fundamentally do as trainers, as fitness coaches, as movement professionals, is we support our clients to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? At the end of the day, any of you, whether it's running, fitness, CrossFit, yoga, Pilates, whatever it is, these movement modalities challenge us in a way that is uncomfortable. That's the truth. If you want to get stronger, better, faster, leaner at something, right? It takes focus and discipline. It takes a practice of day in and day out, right? And so the stories are actually quite powerful because what we do as fitness professionals is alter people's lives. Because when you start moving your body and honoring your body through motion and showing up for yourself, right? Saying that you matter and you put yourself first. It is amazing. But then you realize, huh, if I'm putting this much effort into my workouts, perhaps I'll start fueling my body well. So perhaps I'll start honoring my body by putting in good food, right? I'll share with you what this is in a second. But putting in good food, hydrating well, you know, adding in some more fiber, some more veggies, some more fruits, some stuff that we all know is good for us. But sometimes, you know, life just gets busy and doesn't allow us to fuel our bodies from a place of what is supportive for our cellular systems, right? And then that kind of snowballs into honoring yourself, maybe changing your self-talk, that self-dialogue that perhaps is a little negative, a little self-defeating, 
a little self-sabotaging, a limit, little bit limiting, right? That transforms the way that you move, the way that you nourish yourself, the way that you nourish your mind through positive self-talk. And then it transforms your life because once you elevate yourself, right? Once you increase your self-care, self-compassion, self-worth, self-love, right? That emanates throughout your life. And then you start saying, you know what? I want people to honor me for who I am. You shift your relationships, right? You shift the way you allow people to speak to you, perhaps. And <clears throat> these conversations we've had on the podcast, the Body Project podcast, have been so beautiful and inspiring because it came comes from heart-centered service that becomes transformative. And so, you know, I've been reflecting a lot on it this week, not knowing if I should do an episode on this, not knowing if I should talk about it uh, in the midst of so much uncertainty. But I decided that I really wanted to celebrate myself, honor myself, show up for myself, because this is exactly what I challenge my clients to do, to show up for themselves in a way that is from self-compassion, from self-love, you know, because that's all that you can ask for yourself. And I actually was telling a client this morning, uh, I had four in-person clients outside. We've been doing physical distancing workouts, which has been actually amazing. I tr transformed my gym into, sorry, I transformed my garage into my gym, moving all my big dumbbells and barbells and equipment, T-Rexes, all outside in my front driveway. Um, and people have been training with me there. Anyways, this was my client that I saw virtually online. And what I reminded myself and also her is that when you fuel yourself, when you give back to yourself, right, that's when you can put out more for those you love, more energy for those around you. Now I've had Dr. Jillian Mandich on my podcast twice, right? She is the doctor of happiness. She literally is Canada's doctor of happiness, who is a world-renowned researcher on happiness. And we spoke about this right? About part of the quotient of happiness is what you give to yourself, not looking for external validation to lift yourself up or elevate you, but really that it starts with yourself, right? And so I wanted to practice what I preach. And so I'm going live on Instagram. Don't do that often anymore at all. And I'm doing this video and audio for you guys, because my hope is that this will allow you to practice self-compassion for yourself and self-love in a way that is really about compassion and validating. You know, we just finished five weeks on the Project You. This is a new online project uh, podcast, sorry, a new online program that I've been offering uh, in the midst of COVID. We only had seven people join us, but it was in incredible, transformative, really, looking at nutrition, fitness, and mindset. And it was this beautiful opportunity, this beautiful combination of asking the question, how do I want to come out of COVID feeling, right? And from that, we springboarded and made choices, created a vision of what do we want coming out of this, right? And how can we practice self-love from a place of taking care of our bodies, taking care of our health, celebrating the micro successes. And this is what this is. Two years of a podcast is a big deal. I have pumped out an episode every single week for two years, right? 52 weeks in a year, over 104 episodes over the last two years. So I think that needs to be acknowledged for myself to be celebrated and to acknowledge all of you that has have been listening, tuning in, who have rated, reviewed, and subscribed, who have been following along, sending me beautiful, and thank you guys for those of you that have sent me emails, beautiful emails telling me that you've been listening week after week and that these conversations are making a difference for you because that is my intention. My intention is to share these conversations in a way that resonates, to share these conversations with these fitness and movement professionals, some of the top in the industry, right? Uh, Liza Beth Lopez, who was, you know, maybe a year ago I interviewed her. She is named in the world, top 10 by Forbes magazine of fitness influencers, 
right? So these literally are the cream of the crop in the fitness industry where I get to sit and collaborate and have conversations with about how can we move the needle forward for our clients and how do we do it now and not from a, just a place of rah rah inspiration and yes of course as fitness professionals we are cheerleaders for our clients right we are that sounding board that elevates our clients to see their best selves right mirroring them right but beyond that it is really about the larger conversations of how do we make a movement be change agents for others to lead by example right as fitness and movement and exercise as a powerful modality that not only physically strengthens you but is really a deep practice I often call it meditation through motion if you've ever listened to the podcast of the practice of showing up the practice of changing your state kind of like Tony Robbins always says right change your state you change your life and fundamentally when you move your body it is this powerful way of changing your cellular energy right that that just is the science behind it right and this is why you know the kind of training that I do whether it's metabolic conditioning or resistance training you know it is shown to help metabolize those stress hormones so now especially in the midst of COVID we have this beautiful opportunity to show up for ourselves from a place of love and self-compassion from a place of actually supporting your immune health and your metabolic system to say okay let's move a little bit let's breathe a little deeper right let's honor ourselves from a place of self-love and self-care not from a place of having to do right so you know I didn't want it to be a long episode today but I wanted to share it on all these channels um, and actually, this episode is brought to you by Four Sigmatic. This is their iced coffee. Um, that is actually incredible. So Four Sigmatic is an amazing mushroom company. And this is an instant mushroom coffee that gives you energy without the jitters, right? So right now, for me, it is 12.30 p.m. So I don't drink coffee in the afternoons because I find that it keeps me up. But this is their iced mocha that I stick with ice and it is incredible with some almond milk. Um, and this has chaga and lion's mane in it, which is incredible because it's filled with stress reducing properties and natural adaptogens. So adaptogens are really help your central nervous system from going into that fight or flight response to more of a relaxed state. And so, you know, I wanted to share this with you guys and I'll put into the comments or wherever you're watching this. If you want to try it for yourself, they're having some amazing sales right now. You can use the code body project, just like body project podcast, body project to get, I think it's 15% off. So definitely try it. And honestly, on hot summer days like this, oh my gosh, it's so delicious. So I guess the the final thing that I wanted to touch base on is to kind of reflect back on the last two years, 119 podcasts to date. And, you know, we have, like I said, had some incredible professionals. But I wanted you to share, I wanted to share with you the impact that it has had on me as a fitness provider, as an owner of a small fitness studio. It has given me the opportunity to, to up-level the conversations that I have with my clients, right? As a solopreneur, as running my own fitness studio, as now only the only provider in my studio, it is hard, right, to get a pulse on the industry and always remembering that you're not necessarily alone in this. But as a solopreneur, you know, grinding it out day after day with my clients, it often is difficult to remember that there are other fitness professionals that you can connect with. But as a working mom, running my own business, running online programs, having this podcast, and, you know, trying to be a really good mom and a wife, there's not often bandwidth for everything else. And so, my learnings over the last two years with the podcast has really been 
around connecting with other like-minded, incredible professionals about how we are of service through movement, right? And I fundamentally believe that your body is your temple. And it truly is the only place your soul gets to reside in this lifetime, right? And if you can take that on, if you can just remind yourself that you are, we're so fortunate to have our bodies, right? And especially in this time of COVID, you know, there are so many factors right now about stress, about the coronavirus, about anxiety, about all different things, right? And for me, it has been a strong reminder that our health is our wealth. And many of my clients we have 20 people on my online studio. We had seven people inside my body project, Project U program last month, that they too are very present to the fact that we have a choice every single day to put one foot forward, baby steps, literally, the practice of honoring your body, fueling your body well. And it's not about perfection at all. It's about what can you do today that'll make a little micro change. I really strongly believe that baby steps is what gets us to where we want to go. That it's about these micro successes that we can put in place that'll move the needle forward for ourselves, right? And so my reflection on the last two years of this podcast, I can't believe two years. I feel like literally it was yesterday that we celebrated one year, but two years of this podcast is that that's what it's about that I never looked at how many podcasts do I have to do, right? How much work is it going to be to host and produce a podcast? How, much, how, how many hours will it be to research these incredible guests, right? How many hours will it be to edit the podcast? That's not what the journey is about. Very similar to weight loss or training for a marathon. It's about the baby steps, right? The The... And I, always, I often talk about the magic in the mundane. It is that magic in the mundane, the rote, the everyday showing up for yourself, the little things, saying today, I'm going to give back to myself and get a chaga mushroom coffee as opposed to my usual Starbucks because I know these adaptogens will fuel my body well right? Or tomorrow saying, you know what? I know I'm supposed to be getting at least 10 glasses of water. Let me try, right? And try it on. And every day it's about the practice. You'll get stronger and better at it as you go along. So the last two years of this podcast has really been looking at the baby steps. Look at the baby steps over 118 episodes, two years in. And so my last piece I wanted to share with you before jumping off is that moving forward in this podcast, I don't quite know where it'll go, but I do know that fitness and movement to me is my happy place. I know it isn't for everybody. I know it isn't for a lot of my clients, but for me, it really is this meditation through motion. If you've listened to, you know, especially the first episode and throughout the two years of this podcast, you'll know that for me, fitness was a saving grace for me in high school, right? Um, that going to the gym and physically lifting weights. My first love with, was weight lift, lifting and then Olympic lifting, uh, power lifting specifically. Um, it was so empowering for me, right? As, as a girl who was bullied much of her childhood, as a girl who just wanted to feel empowered, that's what fitness gave to me, right? And so for me, it's, it is this incredible place of having a choice, being able to show up for yourself, that nobody gets to have a say except yourself right? So that's what fitness has been for me. And that's why these conversations I love having with you and that you listen, because maybe something will land, right? Maybe something, you'll have an aha moment that you're like, huh, that girl, you know, struggled with addiction, or that amazing trainer, he struggled with being bullied, or overweight, 
or, you know, childhood trauma, lost his parent, you know, divorce, whatever it is. Because I believe that it is, in, it is in these stories that you will hear something that lands with you, that you'll say, huh, if she was able to lose 100 pounds, then I can do it. If he was able to run a marathon after, you know, severely blowing out his knee, tearing his Achilles, whatever it is, then I can do it, right? And so moving forward, the conversation is going to change a little bit. What I am committed to is looking at, from a fitness perspective, equality, diversity, and accessibility to fitness, right? You know, I have been extremely fortunate that, you know, I was introduced to fitness from a boyfriend in high school. I studied it. I studied kinesiology in university. I became a trainer in 1999, first year university. And that this has always been part of the conversation for me, right? And I'm extremely fortunate that I've built a business over the last year, or the last eight years of people who pay me for my services. What I am very present to is that we need to increase accessibility of fitness because how empowering fitness has been for me, it can be for others. It can be for those that perhaps don't have the funds to be able to afford a trainer or those that have the funds that we can be able to access a group fitness class that they can find their voice. They can find that self-compassion, that way to show up for themselves, that way to move through movement to change their state. Right? And so I am committed to the conversations around equality, inclusion, diversity, um, accessibility, right? From the conversation of fitness, because your health is your wealth, fitness is a powerful modality and access point to transforming your entire life. It has for me, it has for so many. And so we are going to continue that conversation on the podcast week after week. Every Monday we release an episode. I would love for you guys to tune in week after week. If you haven't yet, please rate, review, and subscribe to wherever you listen to this, whether it's iHeartRadio, iTunes, SoundCloud, on YouTube, um, wherever it is, because I also want to reach as many people as possible right? Because it just takes one conversation to inspire someone to say yes to themselves, to put themselves first, right? Whether it's that teenager that doesn't think that they're enough, whether it is that working person that is just trying to make it, right? And doesn't put time in for themselves, uh, eating poorly, not moving their bodies, whether it's that working mom that just wishes she could have a little time for themselves, right? Share these conversations because you never know what lands, you never know what someone wants to hear or needs to hear. And so thank you for listening today. It was a little bit all over the place, but I really think that for me, this podcast episode was about acknowledging that space of celebrating the micro wins acknowledging the baby steps that it took me to get here. Two years of podcast, 118 episodes of a podcast, week after week without fail. And so that is something to be celebrated. So what are you celebrating? What micro success are you celebrating that you can be proud of? Because oftentimes we are so critical about all, well, I know this because I do this. We're so critical about all the things we should do, right? We should all over ourselves, that we think we should be somewhere that we aren't, that we should have done this, that I could be taking more time doing this, that, oh, I'm home because of COVID. I should be able to do da, 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 right? I don't think that's what it's about. It's about adding in self-compassion and saying, what can I do today, right? Or what am I celebrating? What am I proud of right now? Or if you struggle with that space, kind of like I spoke with Samara Zelnicker from Mindfulness Matters, what can you be present to? What can you be grateful for? And even if you can't take it to that space of gratitude just yet, what can you be present to? right? Whether it's listening to a bird, whether it's listening to your breath, whether it's the mushroom chaga iced coffee, the simple things. Because from the simple, from the micro, comes the macro. 
sorry, from the mac, so from the micro goes to macro. You get my point, right? So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for tuning in. Um, make sure you tune in next week as we carry on this conversation. Um, as always, thank you for tuning in week after week. Bye for now.